everybody and welcome back to my channel. Today we're talking with Dylan Lang about some of the modern monsters we see on the internet like the rake and Slender Man. And so uh, here's Dylan. And, more. Oh, and what? <laughs> and many more. <laughs> and many more. Um, I guess the sort of granddaddy is kind of the Slender Man character that seems to really it took off. I don't know how quickly yeah. it took off but uh, to the point where those girls use it as a defense in their murder trial yeah. and stuff. So that definitely um, entered the public consciousness pretty quickly. So thoughts on Slender Man? Um, so, so Slender Man hits the same kind of uh, unnerving qualities that I enjoy about found footage movies where like the photos are always like there's something off about it and you don't necessarily see it immediately where it's just this dude in the background. Um, I, I really enjoy Slender Man, and I've always enjoyed Slender Man. Uh, he was created in a Photoshop contest, if I remember correctly, on uh, some forum online. Uh, and from those photos, people started making their own like lore out of it. And that's kind of where the creepypasta community kind of stemmed from. Uh, and he... And then I think what really added to the popularity was at the time uh, you had YouTubers who played video games on, on YouTube that like those were kind of blowing up at that time and that there was a game that came out called Slender and it had the Slender Man in it. And I think that was, that, that blew up, that game specifically blew up very big, very fast because of YouTube. And I think that's how... Slender Man himself, like all those stories, and then all the creepypastas really kind of blew up very large, very quickly. Um, but yeah, so you've got like the Slender Man, who, who I would definitely agree is kind of the, almost the granddaddy of, of creepypasta, um, or, or maybe the father. Uh, there, there's an argument to be made that the book House of Leaves is considered the granddaddy of creepypasta, just mm -hmm. because of how it's structured and how it handles certain things, but Slender Man is definitely something that influenced the entire subculture. Um, and then after that, you've got, you, you've got some that aren't as popular as others, definitely, but like some of the other popular ones are like The Rake, which uh, you showed me a picture for, of The Rake. My exposure to the, of that picture specifically was I was like 11 or 12, and I was really excited for the film Super 8. And I wanted to know what the monster was going to look like because the trailers didn't show anything. And like I looked it up and for some reason people were, show, were spreading that picture around mm -hmm. as if that was going to be the monster. <laughs> and seeing that as like an 11 year old really creeped me out very much. Uh, there's something about, in, in general, there's something about just footage of forests at night that kind of like gives me this weird tingle at the at the tip of my skull and I don't know exactly what it is and even and, and there's another thing that kind of does that same thing for some reason I don't know why it's it's like it's photoshop that like you can tell is photoshopped and it's supposed to be this creepy thing but it looks fake but for some reason it looks so fake that it, it it's unnerving to me like um, another creepypasta is, uh, the, the smile dog. I don't know if you've ever seen that. That one I've missed. Uh, the smile dog is essentially, it's just this picture of a dog with a red filter over it. They've screwed with the eyes a little bit and then they put like a human smile on his mouth. Hmm. And it looks so fake and it's so obviously fake. And for some reason that picture gets to me and I don't know why <laughs> the same with a little uh, bit off right sometimes yeah you, it's not like the things that are a lot off so it's just a little bit off that your brain's kind of like oh something's wrong yeah it might take me a minute to you know but something's not right um I think you know it's just ultimately these things are we're afraid of the dark right um my brother uh and I went to on vacation in Britain in 2008 and uh, one of the things he said he really appreciated, we went to Wales and we took some trails through the forest. Um, but the thing is in Wales, there are a lot of like Douglas firs and yews and things, and they're really dense. So you can walk three feet off the path and it is absolutely pitch black. 
Um, and he's like, you know, I'd read all these things about medieval battles where somebody was hiding like 10 feet off the trail. And I thought, well, how can you only hide 10 feet off the trail? That's stupid. Someone would see you. But now I can see where, yeah, you really <laughs> can do that. It's, it is literally light and then absolutely dark. Um, and, you know, you think at night, you know, that it's just stunningly just this blackness that you cannot penetrate with your campfire or anything. Um, that, you know, what is out there? What's making that noise? Or what could possibly stand up behind you? And today it's maybe Slenderman or the rake or something. Back there was, so, I mean, you've got your, to me, creepypasta is a very modern form of, of the cryptid, of, of your, like, uh, Sasquatch, Mothman, things like that. Um, it, it's a very modern form of this where... Sasquatch and the Mothman and Yeti, those were spread through like campfire stories. These are very similar things where it's like, oh, I caught a picture of Slenderman, and then they share their story online. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think it's, it's a very interesting uh, kind of progression of, of that. Um, and I was always interested in cryptids too, which is probably why the, the, the creepypasta kind of tickled my fancy as well. The, the, the interesting thing about Creepypasta is that it isn't just the cryptids, though. There's other kind of styles where it's not so much just, oh, you go in the woods and then there's a creepy, malnourished-looking man. It, it's, uh, you've, got, you've got things like Channel Zero. Well, the, the, that's the show. Uh, the Candle Cove is what I meant. Uh, where it's, it's structured like it's this online forum that these people are all together discussing this TV show that they remember watching, that they swear they remember watching. And as the like discussion keeps going, they start remembering more and more of just how kind of screwed up the show actually was. Like the, the, the villain of the, of the show was called the skin taker. And he was like this skeleton that had a cape made out of the skin of children that he would kidnap. And, and like, it keeps progressing until eventually someone just goes, like, I asked my mom about Candle Cove, and she said that, like, she thought it was always so interesting that, like, her kids would just, had such a great imagination, because we would sit in front of the TV and just stare at static. And everyone's just like, wait, what? <laughs> and that's, like, how the story ends. Um, and then you've also got... Uh, kind of takes on the slasher genre of, with like Jeff the Killer uh, and stuff stuff like that. You got Jeff the Killer, you've got various ones. Those aren't very well written and their origin usually stems from photos and sometimes some of those photos like the one for Jeff the Killer are from not great origin. Uh, I'm fairly certain it's believed that the one for Jeff the Killer was a photoshopped image to make fun of some some poor uh teenage girl uh that then she uh she there's conflicting stories about whether or not this this girl is okay or not um but the uh the, the still the fact that it might come from that kind of an origin makes that kind of character in that photo a little not great in my opinion um, now, I did turn Ted the Caver into a movie, and that was halfway decent if you want to look for a found footage movie, kind of. Yeah. Um, th there's there's various films uh, and, and, like, attempts to adapt creepypastas because people realize that this is, like, a gold mine waiting to happen. <laughs> um, a lot of them have interesting concepts, but they're not terribly well written either they yeah. start off with 20 minutes of backstory before the person finally says and now i'm coming to the story and you're like well, 20 minutes ago is when you should have come to the story you know um uh, either that or they don't end they just sort of like they set up a scene like i was listening to one the other day where you know something was like pounding on the door looking at him through his windows or whatever and then it finally came in and then like it ended and you're like okay, that really wasn't a story. Just I mean, stops. <laughs> it just sort of like started with something pounding on your door and it ended with something breaking in your door. And Okay. And we don't uh, even but, know if you died. <laughs> but um, some of them are, are pretty cool. So yeah. you do have to kind of fish through like with other things to get the, the diamonds. Yeah. 
I would I would definitely recommend checking out the uh, the show Channel Zero if you are interested in creepypasta because it does feel like someone acknowledged that they're they're these stories with great ideas but they aren't necessarily the best written things because there's no editors or anything it, it, you just upload your story to the site and whether or not it picks up is based off of whether or not people find it interesting um, and so it kind of feels like. They, the Channel Zero TV series, they, they take these stories and try to flesh them out and try to make them feel a bit more like stories um, with more allegory and things like that. They, they, they try to really add some depth to them, uh, to what is usually just a creepy little thing. <laughs> uh, something to kind of get you in the mood for, for Halloween or something. Um, the... The, the the one that a lot of people always recommend as one of the better ones is the uh, Russian sleep experiment. Okay. See, that was the first yeah. one I ever heard, and that really creeped me out. Yeah, that one's freaky. <laughs> yeah. Um, um, now, one thing we haven't brought up, they're one of my favorites. They don't seem to be very popular. You only f find a couple of uh, photos of them around the net. The Fresno Nightcrawlers. Uh, yeah. <laughs> that just look like walking pantaloons. <laughs> that, you know, and I guess they, I mean, they kind of move like puppets, and I don't know if someone was actually puppeteering them or what, but, um, you know, they're kind of cool, and I, I kind of wish they would take off a little bit because it'd be kind of interesting to see what people would do with them as, as yeah. cryptids. Yeah, like what kind of story they would try to fill out for those or what, not even necessarily that they're like ghosts or something, but maybe like what kind of creatures they are, what what they do in their spare time, like... <laughs> Because, yeah, as all, all we've really seen them is a couple of the security cam footages where they just sort of walk from the left of the screen to the right of the screen. And um, that's it. Yeah. And they're, and they're just pants. So, you know, walking <laughs> pants in the middle of the night, it, it's, it's, it's kind of cool. Um, but, yeah, someone it seemed like you could really run with that if you could think of what they're doing or why they're out there. Yeah. Uh, there's, there was some show I watched... Uh, kind of like Ghost Adventures, um, where they they would take footage and then they would try to replicate it uh, to prove if it was fake or not. And my issue with those shows is almost always that they they don't they don't go deep enough, and so because they don't want to make it like they don't want to they don't want to ruin people people's imaginations, I guess. And also they want people to keep watching the shows, uh, so it's like they never. They very rarely ever gave a definitive, this is fake, or this is real. A lot of times it would always be like, well, there's elements to support both. <laughs> and uh, that was, they, I, I feel like they did cover the Fresno Nightwalkers. That might have been my first exposure to them. And I, that was one of those things where they were like, well, we don't know if it's real or fake. <laughs> um, but the, the, the reality is that with a lot of these uh, kind of uh, cryptids and uh, footage of these creatures and, and ghosts and stuff is that the more, the more time progresses, the easier it is for people to make these kind of things, mm -hmm. um, which, and the more realistic they'll look even, because you've got people who are able to make things that look on par with like, you know, your, TV shows, especially if it's only going to be like a 20 second video, you can get through it. Um, there's one video I saw uh, that was, um, it was this dude in his, in his bedroom and then all of these hands just start coming out of the walls and from underneath the door and stuff. And like, Almost like with anything supernatural on the internet, you've got your group of people who want to believe it, and they're like, "This is a real thing." But it, it turns out that that was a uh, that was just some uh, student who was testing out his VFX skills, <laughs> and that's where a lot of these end up coming from. I think is just people who have Photoshop or or uh, like Sony Vegas or something that they feel like you know. Well, I'm. I need to. Exp I need to experiment. I want to see how good I am at my craft or whatever. They're just screwing around, like with, uh, like that's how Slenderman came to be. Was just someone went. There was a. There was a Photoshop competition to make something creepy, and 
that's where he came from. Mm -hmm. Okay, final thoughts on our new crop of scary things on the internet? Um, like with anything new, <laughs> it, I, I'm almost more excited to see where this continues. Like, so this came from cryptids. What's going to come from this? Mm. That, that's kind of what I'm interested in is, is kind of the progression of what creepypastas will become. Um, but otherwise, uh, they're free stories. Don't like, they're, 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 they're made by anyone. So, and there's no editors. So it's like, sometimes you do just have to settle for the fact that it was a cool concept, you know? And sometimes that's why they're everlasting in a way. Because Slenderman didn't even have a story at first. It, it, it is something where, to me, Creepypasta is, is purely like a conceptual thing almost than an actual craft kind of a thing, you know? Right. Well, thanks for joining me again. And thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this, please hit like and subscribe and hit that bell notification button so you know when I put up more videos. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.